Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Esquire Coaching Radio, where we help attorneys achieve unparalleled personal and professional success. And now here's your host, Anne Janet Thomas. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Esquire Coaching Radio Show. It's such a pleasure to be here with all of you today. As you know, Esquire Coaching is a national coaching and consulting firm that's dedicated to empowering lawyers to happily succeed in the business of law. To that end, we discuss the full range of topics from building business to getting a job to work-life balance and everything in between. Today we have a very special guest who's going to talk to us about video charisma, secrets to using video to get seen, get known, and get business. As we all know, as, we, as lawyers we've been taught that the work speaks for itself, as if clients will just find you in the vast sea of competition. Well, the truth is you're running a business, and you must find ways to distinguish yourself and your market to let prospective clients know you're out there to persuade them to give you a chance. One of the most powerful tools you have at your fingertips is video. Video builds the know, like, and trust factor faster than just about anything else. And there's more good news. Few businesses and even fewer lawyers have exploited this proven medium. Think They think video isn't for them, or they dislike the idea of being on camera, or the technology seems overwhelming, or they think that they don't have the budget. So here's the truth. All of those obstacles are self-imposed. Today, we have top consultant, speaker, and author, Ruth Sherman, who's going to show you exactly what it takes to create and deliver polished on-camera presentations that grab prospects and existing clients' attention using equipment that you already have as well as free Internet resources so you can easily build and their desire to get to know you and ultimately give you their business. Over 20 years ago, speech and media trainer to the stars, Ruth, set out to fix that by using skills and training learned as a successful New York City performer to teach business professionals to perform on stage and on camera. It's what Ruth calls platform and video charisma. Ruth is certain about two things. First, everyone has a unique charisma, a presence, and can uncover it, enabling them to eliminate barriers, connect deeply with audiences, and convert them into high-paying customers. Second, most people won't do what it takes. So if you do, you have a default competitive advantage. Instead of boring, you you become a magnet. Ruth's clients include top global CEOs, Oscar-winning movie stars, and international celebrities. So Ruth, without any further ado, welcome. And thank you so much for having me. As I was listening to you, I, I heard you chuckle about the the boring part, right? Nobody wants to be boring. <laughs> oh my gosh! And we have such a reputation as lawyers of being boring. You do. <laughs> lawyers do. It's true. It's sad, but true. Well, let's let's fix that. Let's let's get. You know, I, first of all, I don't think it's I don't think it's deserved. Can I be honest? I think lawyers mm-hmm. are, you know, among the smartest you know, most helpful, most necessary professions. I've been working with lawyers for a long time. Really, when I started my career, that's what I started. I started with lawyers. And, um, you know, I've gotten to know a lot of them over the years. And, you know, almost uniformly, they're hardworking and earnest. And so I think they get a bad rap when it comes to the boring part. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I agree, and that's part of what we're trying to change, so I'm so glad you're here. So tell us first and foremost, you are an expert in presentation, both on stage and on camera. Why is it so important for lawyers to be good at this? Well, it's important because lawyers are in the business of serving other people, right? You're in a service profession. As people who serve others, we depend on a human connection to, and then of course building trust in order to, you know, have people want us to do their work for them, want us to help them. There's a tremendous amount of 
there, there are a number of lawyers out there. That, you know, we talk, we hear a great deal. We read a great deal in the newspaper about lawyers. You know, being there being too many lawyers, right? They're graduating too many lawyers from law school, and um, not enough jobs. And so, uh, a lot of many lawyers have decided, well, you know, the hell with the corporate route. I'm I'm going to open my own practice, which is admirable and wonderful. But guess what? You know, you've got a lot of competition. So, you know, the idea is, of course, to get out there in a much bigger way than, say, your next-door neighbor lawyer is doing. And video and stage, uh, or speaking, let's call it speaking and presenting yourself, uh, because when we say stage, it, it gets kind of, you know, you feel like, oh, gosh, is she talking about Madison Square Garden? What is she talking about here? <laughs> and it's like, no, no. But uh, doing video, certainly, and, and getting out there and speaking at your at local events and industry events is a key way of connecting with those people, magnetizing them to you, uh, building that no like, and trust factor that you read about earlier, that you mentioned earlier, I should say. And, you know, having people want to give you their business. So it's really a human connection. You know, human beings are wired to connect face-to-face. There's no two ways about it. And, in, in, mm. in, in, you know, lately we've we've seen a lot of people who, for for example, don't want to get on the phone, right? They don't even want to pick up the phone and call. Well, that's okay. But guess what? There's still plenty of networking events to go to, and there's still video. And I'm telling you, everybody, listen up. Nobody's doing it. No lawyers are doing it. I know a few, very few. Mm, it's so true. So, that's part of the reason why we wanted to have you here. Yeah. So, you know, you have worked with Oscar-winning celebrities, top CEOs, and even white shoe law firms, in addition to small business owners. Now, what's the biggest roadblock for all of these professionals that you see? Practicing. Taking the time to practice and rehearse. Getting, getting that off the ground. You know, nobody starts out being great at this stuff. It's like you don't start out being a great lawyer. You don't start out being great on stage or on camera. It's, it's, yet, you know, what you're, what you're doing is it feels like a tremendous risk because you are getting out there and maybe you're not as good as you'd like to be, but it's one of those things that's on the job training. Now, you know, if you're going into an office and you're practicing or you're, you generally have a mentor and that mentor is helping you, you know, as a, as a, as a new lawyer, for example, we know that you're going to generally be relegated to doing behind-the-scenes kind of work. So they're not putting you out there in front of the clients right away. Okay. But when you do a video or you get out there on stage or you speak, certainly you're in front of people. You're in front of potential clients. You're in front of potential referrals. Uh, there's a lot of risk involved. And so it's very easy to say, oh, my gosh, this is just too great a risk, and I don't want to do it. But if you start start small, practice, take the time, and it, and it does take time. So nobody wants to hear when I, for example, tell them, well, the ratio of practice to performance is 10 to 1, and that's a conservative estimate. What I mean by that is for every unit, time unit of, of speech. So let's say you're speaking, let's say you're doing a five-minute video. By the way, that's too long, but let's just say. You've got to say that video 10 times before you're going to get it right. And you've got to say wow. that script ten times. Do it ten times. That could be two hours, easily two hours of time in front of the camera. I know that sounds painful when you've got tons and tons of work to do and all kinds of other responsibilities, but there's simply no way around it. It's where the magic is. It, and it is the biggest obstacle for all of my busy clients. Lawyers are no exception to that. Wow. So how would one get started if they wanted to start shooting videos for their practice? Well, I've got two words for everybody, webcam and window, okay, webcam and window. <laughs> and I don't mean jump out the window after you turn off your webcam. I'm talking about using the window right now, at least in the northern part of the world, northern hemisphere, we're having summer, right? We're having summer. The days are longer. The light is bright. Take advantage of that. Position your webcam, and every computer has one, if uh, let me amend that. Every Mac has one. Most PCs now have one. But if you have a PC that does not have a webcam, 
then buy one. They're very inexpensive. You can get one for 40 or 50 bucks. That is just fine, excellent, as a matter of fact. Plug it in, the computer recognizes it, and you're good to go. But when I say webcam and window, you position your webcam in front of a window so that the light is actually shining on your face. So the light from the outdoors is flooding your face. And then you hit record on that webcam, and you look into that little green dot, that little light I call the little green cyclops, and show it the love. Give people something of value. And my advice to people who have never done videos before is to do five videos right in a row, just very short ones. Let me give you, let's see, let's do an example. How about frequently asked questions? What are, what are five frequently asked questions that clients want to know about? And we're always getting these kinds of questions. And then just rattle them off. By the fifth video, you will already have gotten used to it. You will get, you will, oh, by the way, you have to watch them. You have to watch them. That's the big, that's where the value is. Don't, don't just record and don't watch. Because when you watch yourself, you get better. You learn what you're doing and you see where you need improvement. By the fifth video, you're already better. And besides that, the good news is that your eye and your brain have learned to correct for all of the facial flaws and asymmetries that we all have. And it, it, it kind of inures you to the way you look on camera, which is about 100 times more painful than the way you sound on, <laughs> on you know, when you hear your voice played back, right? So, um, yeah, and, and so that's, that's really the way to start with it. So webcam and window, uh, every computer that has a webcam has software in, in, uh, integrated into it that will record the video, that you can edit the video, and that you can upload the video, that it will become a file that you can then upload onto uh, a web hosting site or up onto your website, uh, any, any number of places to do that. And this is free. This is free. You don't need any special equipment. Oh, love it. That, that, that's fantastic advice and so practical. That's one of the things I really appreciate about you in particular, Ruth. You always share really practical tips. Now, one of the big obstacles for professionals is video content. Do you have any tips aside from, you know, frequently asked questions for helping create content that's engaging? Absolutely. Lawyers, you guys have, this is where you have a tremendous advantage. Lawyers have an enormous number of terms that they use that are used in, in legal proceedings, in legal work, right? That the average person doesn't know what the heck you're talking about. Right? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know what, jargon? <laughs> we don't know. Well, it's not even jargon. It's just the name of legal papers, the name of legal instruments, legal proceedings, you know, there are so many, you know, everything from a trust to a, to a brief, okay? Wow. Let's just, let's just you see to you, you take that for granted, right? Mm -hmm. That's, you know what those things are. I don't know what they are. You know, I, most people don't know what that means. So my, here's my best suggestion for lawyers, write down all of the terms, or get your clients to tell you the terms that you use. That's even better. What are the terms that they have no idea what you're talking about? All right? And, okay, seriously, write them down, attach a sentence or two of definition to each one, and put, it, put a video glossary together. Here's the, the interesting thing. I think that in the past, lawyers had because of the, the billable hour business model, which we both know is changing, mm -hmm. but because it's still pretty entrenched, uh, a lot of lawyers would prefer that a client call. And, you know, you have a client on the phone for a period of time, and unless it's a very short period of time, you're going to be able to bill for that time. That's the way the model works. And so you're reluctant, not you personally, and certainly not anybody on this call, but in general, uh, lawyers, that's the way lawyers bill. And that's the way they create income, and that's worked really well for a long time. But I would suggest something very bold. I would suggest giving this information to your clients and customers, giving it, giving it to them for free, putting it up there on your website so that they can go there anytime when they need to understand something. 
here's what's going to happen. They will like you and feel so much more endeared to you that they will give you more work. They will give you more work than, you know, if they have to call you for every little thing. And you will be freed to do the work that you should be doing instead of, you know, picking up the phone when a client calls and defining what the word trust means and the different kinds of trusts. We all know there are 75,000 different kinds of trusts. So, you know, there is an endless supply of terminology. We call this defining the language of your niche. Just uh, taking a term um, from your niche, your area of expertise, and creating a glossary for it. And I think a video glossary is a terrific way to go. And, um, again, your, your clients will thank you for it and um, it will give you a lot more work as a result. So I think it's actually quite not – I think it's a winner. I think it's a win-win. I agree with you completely, and that's something we do stress here at Esquire Coaching. We believe that it's time for the uh, the legal profession as a whole to – change, you know, change how yeah. we market, change how we do business, because frankly, you kind of have to in order to be competitive in this in this day and age. So totally agree with you on that, and thank you for sharing that tip. Now, earlier, you mentioned that people already have everything that they need, you know, with respect to the equipment to use. Um, yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Certainly. So, well, let's just go back and talk about the webcam. I mentioned that any laptop that has a webcam already has the software integrated, right? So, for example, on Macintosh, we've got iMovie, right? That is going to be on any webcam, uh, excuse me, any laptop that Mac produces, that Apple produces, is going to have iMovie, which is a basic editing program. It's got a few bells and whistles, but not much. It's pretty easy to use, and it takes a little startup time just to get used to it. But you can do some very basic stuff with that. The other thing that um, uh, that happens is, uh, I know most lawyers, or many lawyers, use PCs. And for PCs, if the uh, if the computer itself has a webcam, an integrated webcam, then it is going to, again, have software, and I think that software is Microsoft Movie. It's very similar to iMovie, and it's integrated, and it's there. It's there for you to use and to get to, to learn. If you install a an external webcam, and I would recommend the Logitech brand for that, and they're very common. They really do make very good, very inexpensive. I mean, really, we're talking 40 or $50 for a very good camera, high-definition camera that you plug in, and the Logitech, the webcam will come with software that you install, right? So, so you really can't lose. It's all very intuitive, and it fits right in with the software that exists, whatever operating system you're using. When I mentioned the window, I meant it I meant it quite seriously. For the first two years that I did video, I did not have any artificial lights. I simply positioned my webcam in front of my window. I have a big picture window in my office, and I shot videos. Uh, and, of course, as the days got shorter and I got more eager to use, make, make use of those days, I decided that I needed some artificial lights. So I picked up a couple of what, what are known as soft boxes. Soft boxes are... Uh, continuous lighting, meaning you turn them on and they stay on. They're not photography lighting where you, they're, they're, that would, they're not strobes where you click the shutter and the light goes on and off real quick, right? Just like we know. It's not a flash, let's put it that way. Okay. So it's continuous lighting and it should shed very flattering light on you, on your face, so that people can see you. And the other thing that happens when you're well lit, and it's very important to be well lit, is that the picture quality is not grainy. When you're not well lit, the picture quality, these, these cameras are very good and they're getting better every day. But even so, if it's too dim in the room, the picture quality will be grainy. And for most lawyers who are professionals, it's not going to create a professional image. 
one of the things that I want to make very clear is that you've got to start somewhere. You don't have to have a perfect video going out, you know, out of the gate. But what you do have to do is you have to look consistent with your brand. You have to look consistent with who you are, the profession you're representing, what you want to be paid, and so forth. So there are ways around that, and one of the ways, of course, is to be well lit and have the, the video quality be fairly decent, to, to be decent. The other, uh, oppor the other opportunity that we have these days are phones. All of the smartphones uh, come with videos uh, and video cameras uh, integrated and installed, front and back cameras, most of them. And so you can literally, one of the things that I do is to do selfies, right? So if mm -hmm. I'm traveling or I'm somewhere and I, the mood strikes me or something is on my mind and I decide that this is a good, good piece of information for clients to have, I'll turn on the webcam, uh, excuse me, the webcam, the, uh, the phone camera and uh, hold it out there with using, just hold it out there with my arm straight out and look into that camera lens and show it the love and deliver my information. And then I will upload that onto my computer and put it through the same steps that I would put any other video through. And finally, I'd upload it to YouTube. And YouTube, I suggest having a YouTube account because it is a very powerful search engine. And it's not going anywhere. It's just getting more and more powerful. So, uh, you know, that is, those are some of the uh, equipment uh, items that I would recommend. The other thing that you might consider getting eventually is a USB microphone, so something to plug in to your laptop or your computer, your desktop too. Uh, th these things work perfectly well with desktops as well. And to because we want your sound to be crisp and clear. Although I will tell you that the integrated microphones on these computers these days is really pretty good. It's really pretty good. So you don't need that microphone, but it is something to get. It's some basic equipment that you can pick up along the way. And my favorite microphone is the ATR2020 USB. And I, uh, USB is an important part of it because you want it to just plug in. If that, that microphone does come in an XLR format, which is not what you want. You want a USB form for that mic. So it's the ATR Audio-Technica ATR2020 USB. And that's my favorite right now. Love this information. My goodness, I love it. Thank you so much for just sharing. I want to yeah, take a moment to let our listeners know, if you want to ask Ruth a question directly, please call in right now, 347-838-8719, and press 1 to get in the queue. That's 347-838-8719, and press 1 to get in the queue. And while we're looking at that, let me just ask you this next question, which is, you know, people are always worried about how they're going to look on camera, and especially <laughs> looking good. <laughs> so how polished do you have to be in order for this to successfully work as a, as a business marketing tool? I think you have to think about, well, let, let, me, let me say polished is a loaded term, um, and I would say that what you have to look, the way you have to look is, you know, let me, let me actually reframe this. Let me reframe it and rephrase it. Think about what you're doing. You are doing a video because you want to attract new business, right? You want to let people know you're out there and you want to attract new business. So if you're shooting a video, you want to look the way you would look if you were out, go, you know, going to, going fishing for clients, right? So if you were going to a networking event, you would dress a certain way. And, you know, um, let's, let's also keep in mind that video is from the waist up. I don't care what you're wearing from the waist down, you know, but look good <laughs> from the waist up. You know, it's funny. No, it's serious. I am, I'm really serious about that. So, you know, if you're shooting a video, you want to look professional. If you are a lawyer in a market that requires a jacket and tie, then put on a jacket and tie. If you are a, a lawyer in a market that is casual, then a, you know, a button-down shirt is probably enough. 
if you are a woman, same, you know, the same thing goes. I mean, you're not going to wear a jacket and tie, obviously, but you're going to wear a blouse or, you know, the right type of jewelry or accessories, and you're going to, or you, or you might wear a jacket and a, and a blouse, uh, depending on your market, or you might wear a dress or some kind of a top that says. I'm a lawyer. I'm professional. I I charge X amount of dollars, and you will pay me. You will want to pay me. You know, it's sort of like <laughs> I sort of think it's, it's like Obi Wan Kenobi in uh, in uh, so Star true. Wars. And says, yeah, it and is. I want to. So, you know, one thing we talk about a lot here is about making it consistent with your brand, and that's really what I'm hearing you say. That you know, if your brand is a particular way, make sure that your videos reflect the brand image that you're trying to convey. Is that is that a fair way to say it? That's exactly what I'm saying, and I say that I say that all the time. So it has to be consistent with your brand image, and don't forget your background. You know, I'll never forget the first video that I shot, Anne, and you can go on my YouTube. Everybody can go on my YouTube channel. Ruth Sherman is my YouTube channel. Go all the way back to the very first video I shot. It's called My Great Speaker's Day. Very first video I shot. It's probably three and a half, four years ago now. And I'm talking about how I'm the speech coach to the Hollywood stars. That's how I introduced myself. And I looked, in the, I looked at the background, and it screamed broke. Oh, no. It screamed broke. It did. It said everything. It was a complete contradiction. It contradicted everything that I was trying to say as, you know, as a professional. And, of course, I got feedback. Uh, say, you know, your bookshelves are sagging and your office is messy and you sure don't look like the speech coach to the Hollywood stars. It's like, oh, crap, you know. (laughs) And I learned. And so I passed that along. Make sure your background is also consistent. And you don't have to have a fancy background. You can stage it. Just hang a picture there. You know, find a a wall and just hang a picture. Hang your diploma. (laughs) So important. Yes, absolutely. You know, okay, now lawyers tend to be verbose, and I heard you earlier saying that five minutes is too long for a video. So how long should videos be? They should be short, and and when I say short, a minute to a minute and a half to start off with, um, we speak at about 140 words per minute. Not 140 characters, 140 words. That's a lot of words, right? That's several sentences. So you really can get that enough information. You could, for example, define, do some of those glossary videos in a minute or a minute and a half. It doesn't have to, by the way, you don't want to give people everything. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to share every bit of knowledge you have on a particular matter. That's when you want them, you want them to be hungry enough to call you. But the idea is, um, to, to keep the video short until you gain followership. So then you can increase the length of time. But I would say that in general, keep your videos under five minutes. Even when you get start getting doing them longer, keep them under five minutes. I'll give you an example. I'm reshooting on Friday. I am reshooting three training videos. And they're five minutes each. They're five minutes each. It's amazing how much stuff I can get into five minutes. And I'm not speaking any faster than I am right now. Wow. So this is it's amazing. Yeah. So keep them short. Keep in mind that people will log off at about a minute and a half. They really aren't going to stick with you unless they're just knocked out. See, that's why I suggest that you keep things short. The people are, are really, they're distracted. They're, they have lots to do, just like we all do. And, um, you know, they're going to be, they want it quick. They want that information Absolutely. quick. Absolutely. Ruth, I can't believe we're almost out of time. Please let our listeners know how they can reach you. Absolutely, Ann, and thank you so much. Uh, my website is ruthsherman.com. So that's ruthsherman, all one word, dot com. And uh, if you log in, if you sign into my website, there is a complimentary uh, gift for you there, and then of course you would be automatically added, to, or eventually you would get those three training videos. By the way, and um, you'd eventually be added to my easing list, which you of course can opt out of. 
Um, but um, it would give you notices of all the uh, complimentary trainings that I have coming up and other stuff that um, – and every week I shoot a video, every single week. So a video tip, a frequently asked question, a defining the language of my niche. So I'm doing what you want to do. So it's a good um, opportunity to see somebody in action who's actually doing it. Wow, Ruth, this is fantastic. And listeners, go check out her YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, you can you can just see that Ruth is living proof of what she preaches. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview. Thank you, Anne, for having me, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in and listening. Wonderful. All right, folks, we will not be having an episode next week. I'll be live at the Working Mother Multicultural Women's Conference, and uh, but we will be back on the 23rd. But let's keep this conversation going. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn, and tell us your thoughts. Like, what are you afraid of about using video, or how would you like to share and expand your video charisma? Until then, be well, everyone. <laughs>